Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Mike's Mail, numero six. That's right, number six. We're moving right along here. Um, I gotta get, I got million, you know, I could do this every week, every twice a week if I wanted to. You guys ask so many questions. Um, and I don't know where babies come from. I have a reasonable good idea why the sky is blue, but uh, let's keep it more climbing related, okay? Um, <clears throat> before we get started, I have, well, I have three, two, two things this week was uh, everybody's a very very common question is the size of the prussic cords right so I'm assuming what is the diameter and what is the length and that's where the joke goes and that's what she said but anyhow uh, um, that's pretty common so I, I yeah let's just address that this time and then the other one was incorporating my rope into the uh, anchor system okay but before we do that, I was up on the, trying to get up on top of this wall and do some bolting the other day, and then I got, whatever, clipped up. I, I couldn't get around, and I was starting to climb up, and I wasn't comfortable down climbing, so I had to wrap a sling around a tree and then rappel down to get out of there. And I uh, cut a, the sling with my pin hammer. This pin hammer here, actually, I found this pin hammer on Cascade Waterfall way back in the day, in mid-'80s, and if it's yours and you want it back, too bad. Crone attached to it. So I'll show you how I cut that sling and I do this quite often if I'm ice climbing or something like that where I have a hammer on me on one of my tools then I can just very quickly just cut the uh, cord without looking around for my knife because you know what nine times out of ten my knife is in the back of my best friend and if he's not with me then I don't have a knife on me. All right. So I'm going to do it actually I'm going to do it right here on this rounded river rock so the sharper the edge, the better for cutting the cord. But uh, I'll show you that you can do it really quick with uh, just pin hammer. And I'm using webbing, which is even harder to cut than most materials. Uh, so let's do that. <clears throat> this is well, this is rounded. So let's take a look here. And then all I do is just Okay, that took longer than usual because that's such a round edge. Okay, first up in this edition of Mike's Mail is um, incorporating my rope into the anchor. Hey, Mike here again. Um, I had a question about involving ropes, your climbing rope that you're tied to, and involving it in building your anchor. Um, and how do I feel about that? And I gotta admit to having a bit of a personal bias where I really just don't do that, you know, and whenever I do see somebody doing it, it's, it just looks odd to me. Uh, cases where it might be feasible is, you know, if you're coming up to a two bolt anchor and you know they're two really good bolts, ring bolts or whatever, um, you might be able to justify doing that. I think the problem for me though is, number one, um, it uses up an awful lot of rope. So you got to involve your rope and if you, you know, you got a rope stretch and pitch, uh, you may not have enough rope. If, you're, if that's all you're counting on is to build your anchor with your rope, uh, you might find yourself hooped one day. And number two is that's all fine and dandy even if you can do that uh, up until you have a problem. And then if you take a look at you know one of the videos we produced a few episodes ago, uh, the counterbalance carry, um, it adds an extra and a very complex step into escaping the belay and then going into a rescue scenario. And so for that reason, and one other reason too, is equalizing the anchor uh, becomes a bit of a issue. Let's assume that I just got up here and now I want to build an anchor. So I came all the way up and got a nice crack. So I'm gonna drop in a wire real quickly here. Slides in. Ooh, textbook, baby. Textbook. And what do I got else? I got a smart go with a small can and a worm.
right so i got my pieces and these are pretty good pieces the thing is when i'm building anchors out of natural gear to, you know what some dumbass sport climber called trad gear i don't know where that term came from but i wish it would go away uh i i quite often use more than two pieces unless they're really really bomb proof you know like it's a piece of natural gear and then I might back it up with another cam or something um so i got to take a few pieces now the question was when somebody asked was uh, why can't i or how do i feel about adding my rope to the anchor uh, I guess the thing is, I would have to somehow, if I was to equalize these two pieces, or load distribute them correctly, because they're awful close together, so it'd be really hard for me to hook them in series. And hooking them in series, if the bottom one failed, uh, would totally shock load the second piece. You know, in this case, they're fairly close together, so you might mitigate that a little bit, but let's give it a try. Let's have a look. But I have to be honest with you, I don't do this, I, and it's a, I don't know if it's a regional bias or it's just a personal bias, but to me, um, I just build the egg, I can do a better job with another piece of cord, maybe a prusik or cordelette. So there, that's trying to hook them in series, but that's not any good. I mean, that's no good. So why don't we just do it like we would with a cordelette? Well, we're starting to use up some rope now got to have the rope so let's go with the equalizing this at some point here okay um i did see somebody climbing with uh and incorporating his rope into the the anchor system um in this construction but that was in a position where you know, it was on gooseberry and two bomber anchors bolts and he clipped one bolt and then pulled hits the second bolt and in that case i guess it you know it might save you a little bit of time so here now, I'd have to tie in again with uh, another carabiner. Locker, of course, because it's a focal point. Lock that. And then I could tie off, and there you go. Right. So I've used up one meter here, one meter up to there, a meter back, meter up, three meters of rope, and then I can bring my partner up on to belay on that but here lies the problem too is what if something happens to my partner on the way up right it's very difficult for me to escape the system without i'd have to totally reconstruct this anchor again one more time so the way i would do this normally would be just exactly like this i'd probably throw in another wire up there because i like i say i'm a real sort of guy you know I know everybody thinks I'm real brave but I'm not I'm what we call a live coward okay and then take that now we're going to incorporate that into our system and bring all of these together as we would normally so we do that by Taking this, put it into here. That's what we do, eh, guys? I'm gonna do it proper single fisherman's here. And I know some dweeb out there is gonna go, oh, you gotta use double fisherman's, man. Single fisherman's. You know what, there's a thing. Get over it, get over it, get over yourself. Okay. Bang, 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 draw it together. I want that knot out of the system as much as possible. Anticipate my direction of load, wherever that's going to be. In this case, I'm saying it's right there. Go back. I've got a whole bunch of cords, so I'm just going to do an overhand. Right. Then I take my locking carabiner 
and I clip it in there and then I've got so much slack I can adjust. So it makes everything to me. Now, when I want to escape the system or I want to do something or have extra blade points, I'm not compromising my anchor at all and I can get out of this system really quickly. I can leave it behind because I have an anchor and I can go down and help my buddy. I bring my buddy up and to say he doesn't want to leave the next pitch, well I went and pretty much forced him to unless we want to build the whole anchor and, and take my rope out of the anchor system. So I'm going to have to say I don't really approve of it. I don't. It's up to you. I mean, there's regional biases, and there might be places and times where it's appropriate to do that. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I would say, construct your anchor separate from your rope so that you can retrieve your rope, you can switch belays, you can restack the rope, and you can lead again. Um, if you have a problem, you can go down and, and arrest the problem, fix your buddy up, and then come back up. Uh, it's easier to equalize all the pieces so I get a stronger anchor and I don't incorporate a whole bunch of cord because sooner or later you're going to find yourself on a rope stretcher pitch. You know, you might, because if we're building natural anchors, it might be one of those belays on yam or something where you just don't find where the anchor is supposed to go or you passed it and didn't recognize that spot and there you are stuck and you can't down climb so you build your anchor wherever, right? So. Um, so here's another good example too. I got like the perfect little pocket in here, you know, and it's got a bit of a lip on the outside edge of it so that cam is sitting in there very good. But this one here, because of the flaring nature of it, I can't seem to get a good cam or at least not with the cams that I have on me right now. But it does have a pinch in here where I could get a rope through. Now, if I were trying to build an anchor with my rope, well, there's no way with that little pinch that I'd be able to get that uh, in there. So. You know, there's another another case scenario too where, you know, if I was to build a proper anchor as I want to do, always want to do. I want to incorporate this little natural piece here into, into the rest of my anchor. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I was just using a, uh, my, incorporating my rope. So I, I do believe too also that, you know, using a separate cord gives you a lot more options. Um, I know it feels like I'm throwing a saddle on a dead horse. I've already explained to you why I don't like this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat this into you. I'm gonna beat it into you, folks. Okay, and I'm using uh, Fisherman's here, single. Just because I'm that kind of guy. Now, you know what? I feel pretty good. That, that rock pinch is not too bad. I know this cam is about as good as cams get. So there's my direction of load. Bang. I wouldn't be able to do that with a rope. But more importantly, again, it's my option of being able to get in and out of the anchor, right? So now if I want to escape the anchor for whatever reason, it's easy for me to do that and do something else and it gives me more options. I can add more gear to it, you know, whatever. If I start to get scared, maybe I'll reach up there and throw in another piece of gear. But uh, yeah, I'm afraid I just, I'm gonna say it again. I just plain do not do that. Um, I might've done it when I first started climbing first year once or twice, but I haven't done it since and I just construct my anchor and I always carry enough materials with me to build an anchor out of whatever it is I have. And I'm not saying I wouldn't do it if I had to do it, but I don't have to do it normally because I pre-plan for that uh, event or occasion where things are going to go south on me. All right, that's enough. We threw a saddle on that pony and whooped her to death. Well, as you can see, I don't do it. Um, I don't care to do it, don't make a habit of it, don't teach it, don't have anybody else do it, ain't going to teach my kids to do it, ain't going to teach my worst enemy to do it, I'm going to teach my dog to do it. And the next one is a really common one is uh, what size are those cords that we have? You know the ones you guys call cordelettes down there in the U.S.? I don't know why you call them cordelettes. I mean you can't call french fries french fries, but you can call them freedom fries. So this is a freedom Prusik or a freedom cord. Um, 
what is the size, the length, and the diameter? So let's have a look of at that. cords, like prussic cords, should I be using? Um, you know, I'm assuming now the diameter and the length are what you're inquiring about. But I can answer both those questions at the same time. It's nothing extra. Do you remember, okay, so we, most people, like most climbers you'll see will carry one of these short little personal, personal prussics. That is tied off with a uh, double fisherman's, right? Um, those are really handy, all kinds of things, and it's made up and ready to go, so you can just grab it off your harness. I loop it on my harness. I don't even attach it with a carabiner or anything, just around the waist belt and, uh, and then through itself. And it's always there, and I can just grab it and go. Um, remember, too, that when it comes to making clamps for the rope, I mean, we tend to call it, you know, prussics and things like that and those sort of cords, but these small sewn slings uh, work really well. Also something that I carry, I used to carry a lot whenever I found with guiding in the bugs or places where I throw around horns is this, uh, I don't know what it is, quarter inch super tape, but it's really subtle, supple. And it's about the only thing that bites on really, um, really, really small diameter ropes. And you know, can use a French prussic or on that. And this tape, you know, if you can see it, is really thin and really supple. And it'll grab onto a six mil. Uh, like if a heli ski rope or a ski touring rope, you know, you might have a six or seven mil or eight mil uh, ski touring rope that is really light. And these things will actually work where nothing else will. So, you know, and also it's strong enough to make up for anchors and things like that. So you may want to think about that. Um, at the same time too, people quite often will carry some sort of uh, mechanical clamp that'll work just as well. So this little rope man's a handy little tool. And then, like I said, the sewn sling. Um, this is kind of like the industry standard, or it used to be, anyhow, uh, when I was a puppy, was a five meters of seven millimeter prussic. So five meters would be enough to, in most cases, to build some sort of anchor and draw it together and equalize it or, or load distribute it correctly. And, uh, and small enough that it would grip onto your standard ropes, which is, you know, but th these days ropes are smaller, so um, 9.5 and up, uh, no problem with a 7 mil. I've actually grown quite fond of using these 6 mils, and so I'll carry like a longer prussic and, and still less, less of a bundle, and I'll carry um, 6 meters to 7 meters of uh, cord which allows me to, you know, bring multiple pieces together and still have plenty of cord left over. So, I, my personal favorite is six mil, seven meters in length. Right. And then of course, also these slings, sewn slings work really well for gripping ropes. So, you know, you, and you should have plenty of those. If you're on a big multi-pitch climb where you're gonna need this sort of stuff, then, uh, You'll have these sewn, these sewn slings, these D mirror, Spectra, whatever they are, sort of slings. Okay. I'll put them on the rope. Now people are going like, you need it has to be smaller. And I mean that old, that's old school, and that's the way I learned too. Is that here's two ropes of the same size, essentially. Let's just put a quick prussic on. And the only reason I say they have to be smaller is because everybody else has said it, and I've never actually tried it myself. But it's also starting to look like, yeah, this rope on rope. 10 mil rope on a 10 mil rope isn't going to go over too well. So, for one, it's not very subtle, supple. Another, it doesn't clean up very well. Okay, we're not even going to go there, folks. This isn't working out at all. No. Okay, so it does have to be smaller. There's a reason people said that. Right. Whereas if you were to take your small personal prussic, of course it's the one that's buried the deepest. And that, of course, one, two, three in emergency situations. Two will work fine. 
two works really well when you're repelling two wraps. Uh, if your repel is below your, or your uh, prusik is below your blade device. Because it doesn't, it doesn't need to grip a whole lot, right? It's just, the blade device is doing most of the gripping. So you can see how quick that works. And that's a seven millimeter prusik on a uh, 9.8 rope. So if you're asking again, once again, just to be clear, the uh, industry standard seven millimeter Prusik five meters in length. My personal choice, six millimeter Prusik seven meters in length. That's all I can say. Oh yeah. So welcome to the, this is this edition of Mike's Mail and hopefully I can get another one out because you guys keep bringing me the questions. I'll get around to them. I try to do it in the comments as quick as I can, but a lot of them are pretty good. That one we're uh, asking about where babies come from. If I knew that, I'd stop having them, right? So, see you later.